Good morning, everyone. I'm Yu Hun Jeon, a PhD candidate student at Songgyungwan University. I'm pleased to present our work here. Um, today, I talk about the performance impact on uh, file fragmentation in SSDs. You may wonder why the file fragmentation still degrade the performance even in SSDs. Let's talk about it now. I believe that everyone knows what file fragmentation is. File fragmentation was a serious issue in the, in the hard disk era. As you can see, the disk head must move across the sectors multiple times to read the whole file, while no seek operations are necessary when you read the contiguous file. Naturally, the more fragmented the file is, the poorer the read performance to the file will be. The intuitive solution to mitigate the performance drop from file fragmentation was defragmentation. Defragmentation refers to the pro process of reading files one by one and then writing them back as contiguous files. Obviously, it is time-consuming, also requires a lot of I.O. operations. What about SSDs? They don't have any sick time, as you know. Will this point make a difference in this issue? A few studies have recently reported that SSDs still experience performance degradation due to file fragmentation. These papers commonly tell it happens, but don't explain why. A paper pointed out that request splitting is the primary cause of the performance drop from file fragmentation. Read request to the storage device contains the start address and the length of data to read. When a file da file's data is stored contiguously, you need to perform only a single read request, like this. Now, let's suppose that the file is fragmented into three pieces. The operating system must translate the file read operation into three separate read requests. This is called request splitting. Request splitting is the primary cause of the performance drop. This sounds convincing. It was not a big deal in the hard disk cage because the seek time was very, way longer than the system's request processing times. As you know, SSDs have no seek time. This leaves only request splitting under suspicion. Did SSDs' fast performance finally exposes the request splitting overhead? To answer this question, we began a series of experiments. RAM disk uses the main memory as a virtual device, virtual storage device. Naturally, it is a lot faster than SSDs, even random accesses. If SSD speed highlights performance loss due to request splitting from fragmentation, then RAM disk will show an even bigger drop. The graph shows the to read file when its degree of fragmentation varies. The x-axis shows the degree of fragmentation, DOF, when a file is contiguous, its DOF is 1. When a file is fragmented once, its DOF is 2. And the y-axis shows the time to read the data. As you can see, the DOF did not affect the read, read performance at all. Of course, we, when we set the queue depth of the Linux kernel to 1, the I.O. request must be handled one by one. Consequently, the execution time increased as the DOF increased. Note that the default queue depth of RAM disk is 128. 128 pending requests can be queued at the same time. This shadowed the request splitting overhead. In other words, when the queue depth is su sufficiently large, we cannot see the request splitting overhead. 
Now, let's see the request ob obtained from an NVMe SSD. Of course, when the queue depths were set to 1, request splitting overhead is evident. But this is not a realistic configuration. No one will set the queue depths of an S NVMe SSD to 1. When the default queue depth is 1023, let's, let's see the queue depth of its default value. Contrary to our ex expectations, we could observe that the real time was extended as the DOF increased in SSDs. When, even when the queue depths were set to a very high number. Based on the analysis with them disk, we can tell that request splitting impact is hidden by multi queuing. Then what makes SSD show this kind of behavior? We believe that the root cause of this problem lies in the internals of SSDs. Modern SSDs' remarkable performance could be achieved through their internal parallelism. An SSD these days has lots of fresh memory chips inside. They are connected to the fresh controller through channels. In a chip, there are multiple dies. A die is an independent unit to process a read and write operation. So multiple dies can operate at the same time. Inside the die, there are multiple blocks. And inside the block, there are multiple pages. A page is the smallest unit to read and write. If a page in a die being written or read, no other pages can be written or read on the same die. So it is, it is crucial for the performance to make every die work in parallel as much as possible. Assume that you are writing a file that is larger than four pages. The ideal, ideal placement of these pages is, of course, one for one per each die, as shown in this figure. This guarantees the maximum performance when you read this file. Now, let's suppose that for some reason, these pages were allocated in a single die. When you try to read this file, the full page read operation must be performed one by one, four times slower than the ideal case. This delay caused by processing read requests coming to the same die is known as a read collision. This is the source of the problem. Fragmented files are created usually when multiple files are appended simultaneously. This is the common methodology that was used by most recent related researches. researches. And if a file A is created alone, fragmented, fragmentation does not occur. However, when two files like file B and file D are appended alternately, the files allocate logical space discontinuously, resulting in fragmentation. In this scenario, what would the page replacement in the SSD for these files look like? For achieving maximum parallelism, the FTL employs a rounder method to allocate dice for incoming write pages. In, the, in, this, example, in this example, the, this sequence is all write commands. The sequence 3 will be stored on a page of die 3. And then, wrap around. The die 0 will be chosen to store sequence 4, and die 1 and die 2. This policy enables maximized write performance. But note that the FTL does not consider the file level information. Let's go back to the previous scenario. File A is written without any interruptions. Its four pages are evenly distributed over the four dies. Remember, file B and file D's pages are written alternately. 
But FTL does not know whose page it is when processing a write request, so it blindly chooses the dice in a round-robin manner. File B, file, file B and file D's pages placement are off from the ideal situations. We call this a misaligned die allocation. This does not affect the write performance, but when the reading file B, you will experience two times slower performance than reading file A because of the read collisions occurred in die 0 and die 2. It could be worse. Suppose that each of file pages of file C is written after writing three pages of other files then all pages of file C will be stored in die 0. In such case, four times slower due to read collisions. File fragmentation is often caused by interleaved writes coming from multiple files. This results in a misaligned die allocation for a file. One important point here is situation causing File fragmentation often leads to misaligned die allocation, but it's not always the case. It, this means uh, if you're lucky, even when you got a file fragmentation occurs, two consecutive pages of pay file may be allocated in two consec consecutive dies. On the contrary, even when file fragmentation that does not occur, two consecutive pages may be misaligned. This actually happens quite often in override cases. In override, override, override cases, let's see what happens inside an SSD. You perform overwrite to an existing contiguous file. Assume that file A, B, and C are written as shown in this figure. All three files are written in sequence their pages are ideally placed in dice. Now suppose that A1 page of file A is overwritten. The new A1 page will be allocated in die 0 because it is its turn now. Because it's, what it was overwritten at the file system level, it is still contiguous. However, as you can see, reading file A now takes twice of the time because A1 must be read after reading A0. Let's get back to the previous append example. In this case, we append B3, a new block to file B, will be allocated in uh, die 1. In summary, interleave the append operations and overwrite to existing files can result in misaligned die allocation. Conventional approach. Defragmentation reads each files and write it back sequently. Sequentially, this will make the page placement ideal. But we all know that this is costly and requires suspension of an other files operations. Simply not feasible. Our approach aims to prevent misaligned die allocation during write, during write operations. Let's get back to the previous scenario. When overwriting A1, if die 1 choose instead of die 0, no read collisions will occur when reading file A later. The same, when appending B3 to file B, die 3 is chosen instead of die 1, the, the placement is perfect in this case. The principle is simple. When overwrite, the new page must be allocated from the die where the old page was located. When appending, the new page must be allocated from the die next to the one that previous file block was written to. To realize this, the file system should tell the SSD that whether a write operation is append or overwrite. If they are append, 
The file system also delivers the address of the last file block of to the SSD. Then the SSD identify, identifies which die contains the last block and allocates the page from the die next to it. This information can be delivered using the resolved bits in the NVMe command. Two bits for the flex that tell whether the write command is for append or for overwrite. 64 bits for the address of the last five block. Using the resolved bits for transmitting this information, no additional protocol of it is necessary. As a result, our approach always keeps the ideal page placement, even when heavy file fragmentation occurs. We, evaluate, we, we evaluated our approach in two ways. First, we valid, validated our approach using commodity SSDs. You can refer to the paper. Second, we implemented and evaluated our approach with NVMe Vert, a state-of-the-art NVMe emulator. In addition, we modified the EXT4 file system and NVMe driver accordingly. We evaluated the implementation with four hypothetical workloads and two application benchmarks. The first set of hypothetical workloads is append. A target file was created by alternating writing it to a dummy file. Then we measured the time to read the target file. Overwrite, the target file was contiguously written and overwritten by alternating writes to it and a dummy file. The worst case, of design, uh, worst case was designed to allocate the file to a single die by modifying the write size of the dummy size. In random case, randomly determined the size of the writing to dummy files occurring intermittently look uh, like this figure. This is more realistic than the worst case. The result indicates that for both append and overwrite operations, in the worst cases, performance degradation reached up to 20% of a contiguous file's performance, and up to 60% in the random cases. Applying our approach results in only a 6% performance decrease. Experiment with SQLite and Firebench demonstrated performance reduction to 60% and 77% of contiguous files, which improved to a 10% reduction with our approach. In conclusion, we identify the true cause of performance degradation due to file fragmentation most of the request splitting overhead is concealed in a multi-queue environment. The primary cause is read collisions due to a misaligned die allocation inside an SSD. When we proposed an approach to uh, we proposed an approach to mitigate the misalignment, our approach provided file system information to the SSD, so then the SSD keeps the ideal page to die allocations, even under adverse conditions. Our approach addressed not only the append case, but also the override cases. Thank you.